So that one house in that whole community is annexing into the city of Stockbridge? Correct. Interesting. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So, so how, how do we, um, county manager, um, when it comes to pro 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 providing police services, how do we take that one house out if they should uh, dial 911 so of, of our system? They will, when, when the call comes in for our dispatch system, the city of Stockbridge Police Services will be dispatched for that one house. Um, uh, on April the 25th, the city of Stockbridge uh, passed resolution 23-1565. In that resolution, the city of Stockbridge um, asked to withdraw from the strategic delivery service agreement. So just to kind of give you an idea, a mutual aid agreement, um, basically it's an agreement that's allowed by state law that actually allows for different municipalities to provide aid in cases of local emergencies. Agreement also allows for the county to levy a uniform millage rate within the police service district um, to access a cost for police servicing the area in the city of Stockbridge, I'm sorry. First, the city of Stockbridge, they want to withdraw from the SDS agreement uh, so that it reflects the, that they uh, no longer need Henry County Police Services. That's number one. Number two, they are requesting reimbursement from July of 2022 to the present um, and for the next calendar year for any police services collected by the tax commissioner. And third, the city of Stockbridge would like to enter a mutual aid agreement similar to the agreement entered into with the cities of Hampton, Locust Grove, and McDonald's. Yes, I do have questions. Uh, did we not, uh, earlier this year, um, return funds to the city of Stockbridge with regards to police services? Wasn't it like two million what was what was what was it that we gave them uh, earlier this year with regards to the rollback? So the board approved a resolution allowing us to reimburse or to make payment to the city of Stockbridge um, beginning in July of 2022 to December 31st, um, 2022, and that payment has been um, submitted to the city of Stockbridge. So then, then why are they asking for additional funds? I, I can't speak to that, Chair. I'm, I'm not sure. I do know that we did um, honor the resolution that the board um, approved, and that payment was made um, to the city. So what was that payment amount? Um, Chair, I believe it was about two, two, about $2 million. 2.4? Okay, let me start over. $1.2 million <laughs> was reimbursed. You said $1.2 million? Yes, ma'am. That was from that July to December. Yes, ma'am. July to December. Yes. So now in January of this year, they should have, the rollback should have automatically occurred. Am I correct? Yes. Okay, come up. Somebody, yes, I'm, uh, the answer, yes. <laughs> because at the end of the day, I don't have a problem with the service delivery um, um agreement them opting out and, and and going to the mutual aid what i do have a problem with is them asking for additional funds and so so that's where i have a problem so so chair we we have remitted payment to the city of stockbridge from july 2022 through december 31st 2022 1.2 million dollars we have not remitted payment for 23 because that would be a new calendar year for us. So that payment is due to them in the amount of $2.4 million. Okay. So what I am saying is this resolution says from July of 2022 to when? Uh, to the present. So uh, the city of Stockbridge resolution indicates that they were not paid from July. They still have funds owed from July of 2022 up until the present. So, uh, Co Commissioner Thomas, go ahead. I I'm not willing to, to, to give that type of, of authority. Okay. So we can amend the, the SDS agreement and go to the mutual aid, but that's it. 
for me. However, based on the resolution that they're passing now, that they're saying they want to get out of the intergovernmental agreement, the county would not uh, have to provide them routine police department services. Well, I, I, I have no problems with that, but I have a problem with them saying that we owe them money. That's what I got a problem with. The motion. Uh, okay, well, I, I'll, I'll make a motion that we change from the SDS agreement to a mutual aid agreement, period. We can't do that. So we okay, have a service okay. delivery strategy for all of our cities. Okay. So really tonight, you all don't have the option of not saying you're not going to amend it because you have to because they have their own police department. And if we don't amend it, the IGA remains in effect, but we're not doing that, if that makes sense. Because they have their own police department, we have our own police department. I don't think you all don't have the option not to um, amend the service delivery strategy because we've already given them money back so we've acknowledged that they're operating their own police department. If that because we're constantly buying vehicles. I know our sheriff department is waiting on vehicles. We've bought other vehicles for our police department. We've upgraded some fire engines and I have been asking probably about three years now because I'm in my fifth year about to say where is that plan of what we're going to do. So I'm requesting a full-scale written plan that anybody can look at and say, this is what we're leasing, this is what we're saving by doing, this is what we're buying, this is what we're saving by doing, the process that we need to follow. I just want some policies and procedures that are in place that we can make sure implemented consistently. Okay. And, you know, I mean, because I know some public safety equipment we cannot lease, we purchase, and I know some that we can lease. Um, and so just uh, share with the board uh, in the next 30 days uh, Commissioner Thomas's request on a uh, written plan. So, so I, I have a one question on, on the leasing option. I know a lot of times we are com competing with People like Enterprise that do that lease option, they're competing for the same vehicles we're competing for, whether we lease them or purchase them. them. Is that correct? That's correct. We actually have had um, quite a few conversations with Enterprise Leasing um, about the possibility of leasing administrative type vehicles. But, but I think all that has to be incorporated, um, the mileage and, and, and the wear and tear on vehicles when you are generating this plan. Absolutely. And I think the, the lease pur purchase option is going to be more applicable to those that are in administrative type vehicles. The other thing that we're also looking at is electric vehicles. And that has been something that we've had some conversations about in terms of who would be most suited for that type of vehicle and how we can incorporate charging stations in some of our developments, or at least our new developments that are going forward. So we are looking at every option um, out there in terms of making sure that we are saving monies, but also making sure that we're planning for it. Commissioner Thomas is right. We have done quite a few vehicle purchases, but this is what has been the result because we haven't had a vehicle replacement plan, and so we had a number of vehicles that needed to be replaced at the same time. So, so I have a question. Does, does this um, change our comp plan if we do this rezoning? Is this in, in, in violation of our comprehensive plan? Plan. Uh, that's an excellent question. Uh, the comprehensive plan, uh, future land use map designation for the subject property is low density, which would support up to um, two dwelling units per net acre. Uh, that was three lots. That density, net density is 1.1. 1 .1. Um, the low density residential uh, future land use map designation would support uh, up to an R3 designation. Um, so, so short answer is uh, the comp plan does support this request. So I have a question. What is in this area that, that we're, what currently, what type of residential is currently in this area? Okay. Uh, so this is the current zoning map, um, obviously to the west and south. 
of this subject property shown in green, uh, we have the subdivision that is zoned uh, for both uh, R2 and R3 purposes. Um, to the east of the subject property is zoned RA, a little bit to the north is zoned R1. So it's a combination of different zonings in that area? Yes, that's correct. Uh, is the so is this in a subdivision? Y'all come and help me. This property is outside of the subdivision. It's outside of the subdivision. So these other little, little yellow boxes are those homes? That is the, that is correct. Yes. And they sit on and they're they're zone what? That is zoned R three. They're zoned R three as well. Correct. Are they on septic? Sewer. We need to um, so I, uh, we need to take a vote pertaining to executive session. So I ask for a motion to approve amendment number eight to ACCG defined benefit plan for Henry County employees adoption agreement. Can I get a motion? <laughs> Where is it? It's pertaining to the executive session. It's regarding the early retirement. Motion to approve. Okay. Second. Is that correct? Is that what? Okay, Nancy, is that right? Yeah, that's fine. 